three stocks that I own have reported earnings. We're going to go over that right now. Stock number one, Alibaba. They're expected to do $2.62 per share. They did 2.67. So they beat there. But revenue, depending on who you looked at, by the way, Mo, because I saw some places said they beat, but $36.7 billion expected revenue. They did 36.6. The big news, they were up pre-market, up like 4 or 5%. And the big news came out that they were initiating a $25 billion stock buyback and they fell after that. I don't know if that was the timing, but guys, this company last year, look, let's, look at, let's, let's look at this company. In the last year, this is incorrect about their free cash flow because of the new, the new one year, $25 billion in free cash flow. The market cap's $190 billion. That's 7.75 times free cash flow. Guys, the market right now is like at 20 sometimes free cash flow. This is a discount. So what's the reason? Fear, right, Mo? We've been talking about Baba for a while. I have a position. Again, it doesn't mean you should go have a position because I do, but they should be buying back stock. It's a cheap company. We shouldn't criticize this. And for all you people saying, you don't actually own the company. Okay, just if you believe that, just stop watching the video because <laughs> this is the way it is for a lot of companies out there, especially China. I get it. There's a lot of fear around China. And I'm not trying to sit there and say, you shouldn't have fear about China. Of course there's fear. I've had fear on China, right? But you look at this company and it's generating tons of free cash flow and their free cash flow is above their net income, which I love even more. So I sit there and say, is the juice worth the squeeze? Mo, what are and your not thoughts? only those metrics are growing, but the revenue is growing. They're, all, of their, all of their individual kind of sector businesses are growing. The biggest thing stopping is, like you just said five times, fear of China. Yeah, and I don't blame people. There's a lot of fear of China, but I will say there's a lot of good news about China too. It is still one of the world's most potentially growing economies. Now, India is doing great, but China is losing population right now, but their per capita income keeps growing. The world still relies on China's for a lot of, uh, China for a lot of manufacturing and things like that. So this is Alibaba's actual press release. They talked about 5% year-over-year revenue growth. Not the greatest, not the best. So I, I'm not like sitting there jumping for joy on that one. But a couple of great things that happened here. Revenue, like I said, 5% increase. Income from operations was actually a decrease of 36% year-over-year. That is not the greatest, but it was also attributed to this impairment charge of intangible assets. That was the income from operations. Um, net income, again, for that reason, let's go focus on the free cash flow. So I'm going to search for free cash flow, $7.963 billion, which is still a decrease of 31% in the same quarter. They had um, in, in the same quarter of 2022, but it was attributed, they have it right here, increase in CapEx. CapEx means they're investing back in themselves. $8 billion in one quarter. If they replicate that over and over again, that's over $30 billion in free cash flow in the year for a company that's market caps $190 billion. For the nine months ended December 31st, free cash flow was $19.8 billion. And again, I looked at the first quarter, the first quarter was around four and a half billion. So it was roughly 24.3 to $24.5 billion for all of 2023 for a company that's market cap is... 190 billion. I'm going to keep repeating this over and over. They already had a $50 billion share buyback. They've initiated another $25 billion share buyback. This is a great return for the investors. It's Alibaba saying our shares are cheap. We're going to reward you by buying back shares, giving you a higher, a bigger piece of the company as we continue to grow. Okay, guys, at the end of this video, when we're done covering the next two companies, we're going to do stock analyzer. So company number two, good old Disney. Disney was expected to do $1.04 per share in earnings per share. They did $1.04 per share in earnings per share. They're expected $23.77 billion in revenue. They did 23.5. So they missed there. Now two, so it's up 8% right now after hours. Two big pieces of news. One, it took a $1.5 billion investment in Epic Games, the maker of Fortnite. And two, we're going to get the exact percentage, but I believe they increased their dividend by 50%. Now, their dividend used to be big. COVID hit. They cut it back. But they're having amazing revenue. Like, if you sit there and look at this company, let's look at the quarter to quarter. So, in last year's, they did $23.51 billion. In the last quarter of 2022, they did 23 point, oh, the same, actually. They said they did the exact same revenue right here. But you extrapolate that out for the year. That's almost $100 billion in revenue. 
Look what they've been doing even before COVID. And that's another record year here on pace for another record year. I mean, this is incredible. My plan Disney is one thing and one thing only. Are you ready? Look at this revenue. Look at this profit margin right here. Last year was 2.6%. Last five years is 4.2. Historically before COVID, they were at 10 to 15%. So I'm sitting there saying, listen, just get back to 10%. You just get back to 10%. How much more valuable is this company? How much more can you do? Now, I'm looking at this thinking to myself, okay, Disney, if I gave you this market cap right here is $182 billion, lower than, than Alibaba. If I give you $182 billion and said, go replicate Disney, how well would you do? Go compete with Disney. It'd be very, very difficult for you I think to it'd do. be extremely it's not difficult. impossible. Yes, it, very, very difficult. Now, its all-time high was actually after COVID, $202 per share. Um, this is an eight pillar that just looks terrible. We have one check mark. Look at this. One check mark here, revenue growth. Guys, there's a lot of things going around with Disney. As a value investor, what you want to find is temporary problems. Now, this temporary problem has been ongoing, but I look at Disney saying they've had some issues lately. Do I think Disney's going away? I do not. I do not at all. Mo, did you find anything about Epic Games and their Fortnite investment? Yeah, so I want to show you. So the, here's the Epic Games thing. Disney to take $1.5 billion stake in Epic Games, um, work with Fortnite Maker on new content. Now, a couple of other things. You were correct. It's a 50% increase in the dividend, um, 45 cents per share. Also, a couple other things I wanted to hit. Hulu subscribers increased by 1.2 million from the prior quarter. Disney Plus core subscribers net additions between five and a half and six million. Wow. So they're adding to those spaces of their business. One more thing. Yeah. They also plan a $3 billion repurchase in 2024. $3 billion. That just shows you how, how big the Alibaba repurchases. 100%. Three billion. We're on track to meet or exceed our seven and a half billion dollars in annual saving annualized savings target by the end of fiscal 2024. Guys, if they do a hundred billion in revenue. And they're saving 7.5 billion. That adds 7.5% to that bottom line before taxes. So I think Disney is the kind of company they're doing a lot of investment. They're they're, you know, the streaming services guys is a very actually tough business right now. It's very saturated. I don't think that saturation is gonna stay for the, the, the foreseeable future. There will be a point when there's consolidation, people shut down. And I think look at Disney and they have such a good library and ownership of a bunch of different movies, different characters. It's going to be a hard one to get rid of, right? I look at that going, go ahead, Mo. And they're a monetizing machine. I mean, they can monetize shows into products, into shows, into products, into movie. It's just insane that the churn that they can do that nobody else can really do. Yeah, and look at this, Mo. We expect Disney Plus core subscriber net additions of between five and a half to six and a half, five and a half to six million, and ongoing positive momentum in ARPU, average revenue per user in the second quarter. That's a big growth for the second quarter right there. Wow. Yeah. I mean, what's the and the thing is, what's the gross margin on on a Disney Plus user? It's got to be huge numbers, over ninety percent. So, guys, again, I think Disney. My play on it is a long term play. And we will get into the stock analyzer tool shortly, but it's a long-term play based on them turning things around, getting better with their costs and driving back that. It's similar to my Southwest Airlines play. It's a lower margin than they experienced, a much lower margin than they had before COVID. Hopefully getting back to that lower margin because their revenue has absolutely crushed COVID times. And now guys, stock number three, PayPal. This is the one that's hilarious to me. Guys, they were expected to do $1.36 per share in EPS. They did $1.48 beating handily by temp almost 10%. They're expected to do 7.87 billion in revenue. They did 8 billion. And look at this, down 4% after hours. Now, they did guide for 2024 an EPS of 510 per share from 549. That might be the reason why. But I look at this saying, okay, let's say they make $5 a share. At 61 bucks, that's a PE of 12. Is a PE of 12 appropriate for PayPal? Listen, there's a lot of negativity on PayPal. But I want to remind you, I'm not saying that PayPal is meta. Remember the articles and the stories on Meta when it was sub $150 a share, when it was going down. It was, these guys don't get it. They're has-beens. Even though revenue and profit were going up, people were still saying they're dying, et cetera. Do you hear the same thing with PayPal? I do. Now, again, right now, sentiment on PayPal is not the best. 
I get that. But I look at this and I think to myself, is it being exaggerated? Well, let's go look at the income statement for the four quarters. Well, for such a company that people are saying can't beat Apple and won't be able to compete with Apple, this is a lot. This is revenue growth right here. Yes, is it slowed? But guys, they own Venmo. Do me a favor. Cash app me. You're not. You know why? Because I don't have cash app. Venmo me. That's the verb. It helps. I'm not saying it's the be all end all. I'm not saying that that makes it awesome. But PayPal is secure. They're safe. They're pro customer. When I'm buying something that I'm like from overseas, what do I buy with? PayPal. PayPal. When I'm sending somebody money locally, my fiance, everybody, Venmo. Wasn't a big jump, but last year's fourth quarter was 7.38 billion. They grew to 8 billion. Okay. So it's high single digit growth. It's not huge. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to sit there and say it's awesome. But when a company is being told to you that they are dying, you don't see revenue increasing. I'm sorry. You just don't. Revenues increased 9%. When you look at full year financial results, net revenues increased 8 and 9% um, to $29.8 billion. That's the number you just showed. Transaction margin dollars decreased, however, 1%. Oh, okay. Let's see what else we have here. Um, gap operating income increased 31% to 5 billion non-gap increased 14% to 6.7 billion. Yeah. So by the way, the stock's rebounding now, Mo, look at this. It's only down to 1.8%. That's the crazy thing about earnings. You just yeah, never things, know. Things can fluctuate guys. I mean, they beat on both. If you told me the morning in the morning that they would crush on earnings, crushed on, um, revenue, not crushed, but did better. I just said, Oh yeah, the stock's up, but you don't have that. You look at Alibaba, they beat on profit. They were up. It, that's the point that we're trying to make. Like we don't look at quarterly results as our way of saying, this is our thesis is right or our thesis is wrong. We just sit there and want to see, okay, has anything changed in the company fundamentally? And in all three companies so far, we haven't heard anything that says this is changing fundamentally. Do I wish Disney was buying back shares like Alibaba was? Yes, I do. I do wish they were buying back shares. I know people love their dividends that they're bringing back. When you talk about the guy, the financial guidance, we, I, like, I would look at that price reaction and say, okay, guidance is probably down. Everything that I'm seeing here in guidance is an increase, increase in revenues. Now it's six and a half and 7% versus the 9%. So maybe that's it. Maybe it's less, but every single thing in here is an increase. Now I don't people, are, people are asking, is this a, a melting ice cube? Uh, in order to be like, to me, melting ice cube is the newspaper business. Like it just slowly and slowly gets worse and worse and worse. Yeah. I don't, my personal and guys, everybody's going to have their different opinion, but I look at it and I look at these financials going, how is this in melting ice cube when revenue is increasing profits increasing? It could be, they could be on a cusp that I don't see. Absolutely. So obviously do your due diligence. So the question is, what price do we pay for these three companies? Let's first start with Alibaba. And I'm going to pull up the last time we did Alibaba in our community, January 22nd. Now, here's what I'm doing with Alibaba. I'm going to do 9% across the board for our desired return. And I'll explain to you why in just two seconds. But for our revenue, I did 3 6 and 9% revenue growth. For profit margin, I did 15 19 and 23 Free cash flow. I dropped it to 17, 22, and 27. Guys, look at this free cash flow number. I love the fact that it's all much higher than their profit margin. That is incredible. PE, current PE of 10. I put 16, 18, and 20. Same with price of free cash flow. Now, desired return. I put in 9% for the market. I like having margin of safety. And that's why if you have our software, you can put these higher numbers in. My recommendation to you is if you, first off, if you don't trust China, don't even look at this company. Don't even waste your time. But if you, if you want to buy in China, but are a little, still a little scared, put a higher desired return. That's your higher margin of safety. If you put 20% return in, you're going to get a very low number. But this is where it is based on if the market was normalized. Analyze. Look at this. 120 to 135 on the low side. 330 to 392 on the high side. 200 to 240 in the middle. If you bought at so, today's prices and the middle numbers occur, you're looking at a 10 year return of 28% based on a discounted cash flow model. So I did the exact same numbers as you, but I changed the desired return to 15, 20, and 25%. And these are my numbers 80 to 90 on the low, 114 to 134 on the high. Middle middle's about $100, $105. But that's with a huge margin of safety. And guys, we don't know what's going to happen in the future. I personally believe the juice is worth a squeeze here with Alibaba. But I'm comfortable with the risks involved. If you're not comfortable with China, you must avoid this company. Let's go check out Disney here real quick. 
Okay, let's go to Disney. When was the last time I did Disney in our stock analyzer tool, Mo? I did it January 17th. So I did two and a half, five and a half, and six and a half percent revenue growth. Now here's what I did with profit margin, guys. I did low side of six, middle of 12, high of 18. Because I'm hoping that in the next 10 years, this really starts to increase because of Disney Plus. PE. Now look at these PE numbers because the, the profit's been so low, the PE is very skewed. It shows 77. That's not the real PE. I did 17, 20, and 23, and I could argue it's much higher than that. I could argue a much higher PE than 20. I mean, it's the moat of moats, right? It's a it huge is. moat here. Yeah. And again, I did 9% desire return. No margin of safety yet. I hit the analyze button. Okay. I have a low price of 46, high price of 268, a middle price of 130. So I feel comfortable here. Like to me, I look at this going, okay, is it likely to be 6% uh, margin for the foreseeable future? Probably not. So I feel comfortable with this investment. Mo, what about you? Now I put in margin of safety of 12, 14, and 16%. 37, 65 on the low, $160 on the high, $90 in the middle. That's with margin of safety again. Great. All right, now let's check out PayPal. PayPizzle. Again, I'm gonna do the 9% across the board not including any margin of safety. So guys, those of you who are used to our channel, I used to always put my own margin of safeties in there. And the thing I found was, if you, it, you have to sit here and use the software for putting your own margin of safety in because you might have an immensely great knowledge of some company or some sector that I don't. So why should I show my bias in there for it? I want you to be able to do that. So I'm just trying to display how you do it here in our software. So revenue growth, I did four, eight, and 12 for PayPal. You know what? Maybe I should go a little bit lower. Let's go three, six, and nine, Mo. Because okay. they're not projecting that much. Okay. Profit margin, I did 12 and a half, 15 and a half, 18 and a half. And free cash flow, I did. Now, besides this last year, free cash flow was always larger than its profit margin. In the last five and 10 years, it was larger. So I did 16, 20, and 24. Sorry, I did 12 and a half, 15 and a half, 18 and a half. Free cash flow, I did 16, 20, 24. Now for PE, I did 13, 16, and 19. If it starts to not do well, it becomes this crappy company. 13 is fine for me. And the 9% desired return, I hit the analyze button. I have a low price of 47 to 60, high price of 140 to 180, middle price of 82 to 105. If the middle assumptions occur and I pay today's price, I'm looking at 16% return. Mo, did you do anything different? Only thing I changed was margin of safety again. 38.75 to 49 on the low. 82 to 107 on the high, middle 57 to 75. Guys, if you want to do your own assumptions here, we have a free seven-day trial on our software. Go to everythingmoney.com. Full access, community, all the tools. You've only scratched the surface by watching this. Everythingmoney.com, seven-day free trial. Take care.